Submitted for your approval, two holiday traditions. One, a year-end exhibition of a sci-fi classic. The other, a twisted take on our favorite animated family. Tonight, we will help you plan your marathon with episodes that inspired The Simpsons, and together, we'll join these 2D icons as they cross into the fifth dimension, otherwise known as the Twilight Zone. The time, 1990. The place, Springfield, USA. The episode, Treehouse of Horror, and a tale of deception called Hungry or the Damned. Eat. Grow large with food. All right, I gotta switch off this Rod Serling impression or this video is gonna be like 40 minutes long. Anyway, during a backyard barbecue, the family is abducted by Kang and Kodos, two drooling aliens who promised them a life of paradise back on Rigel 4. A world of infinite delights to tantalize your senses and challenge your intellectual limitations. Only Lisa seems to notice their extremely obvious obsession with the Simpsons' weight and succulents. Hey, how come I never see you guys eat? Oh, uh, we wouldn't want to spoil our appetite for... The Great Feast when we land on Rigel 4. <laughs> <laughs> and her suspicions are confirmed when she finds a book called How to Cook Humans. <gasps> but the actual title is obscured by an absurd amount of space dust. <sighs> I guess Serac the Preparer doesn't really keep a tidy kitchen. If you wanted to make Serac the Preparer cry, Mission accomplished. After a hilariously long back and forth, the book's full title is finally revealed. Let me get this straight. You thought they thought we were going to eat them. <laughs> Good God, is this some kind of joke? The humiliated Simpsons are left behind the toil on Earth. There were monsters on that ship, and truly we were them. The segment is based on a 1962 Twilight Zone episode called To Serve Man. Ladies and gentlemen of the Earth, we greet you in peace and friendship. Some giant aliens called the Canamits arrive on Earth and humanity is skeptical. Precisely what are your motives in coming here quite uninvited? Are we to assume that there is no ulterior motive? Until cryptographers decode the title of their mysterious book, to Serve Man. The Canamits do just that for a while, but the illusion is shattered after the rest of the book is decoded to reveal a horrifying truth. Don't get on that ship! To Serve Man! It's a cookbook! No! No! For such a staple, the episode had a pretty thin premise. It's pretty unlikely that the Canamint language even has grammar. And what are the odds that it have a word with the exact same dual meaning as English? You speak English. I am actually speaking Rigelian. By an astonishing coincidence, both of our languages are exactly the same. It's no arrival, that's for sure. But the Cold War paranoia that's a hallmark of the Twilight Zone was perfect for a Simpson parody. Ooh. Oh. Excellent, Mr. Simpson. Excellent. Our next case is a dive into the mind of a troubled 10-year-old boy, Bart's Nightmare. Not to be confused with the incredibly difficult Sega Genesis game of the same name. Quite a twist, huh? In this Treehouse of Horror 2 segment, Bart holds Springfield hostage using godlike psychic powers. Hi, Otto. Move over, I'm driving. Oh, <laughs> no can do, little buddy. Oh, wait. You're the little dude with all the gnarly powers. Quit riding the brake, Otto. Give it some gas, man. Hey, <laughs> this is fun, isn't it? We're gonna die, aren't we? <laughs> we can alter reality, change history. And our country isn't called America anymore. It's boner land. <laughs> and transform dissenters into hideous monstrosities. <laughs> if Harry Shearer's Rod Sterling impression didn't clue you in, this segment is based on a Twilight Zone episode called It's a Good Life. Just like Bart, a boy named Anthony, has trapped his entire town in limbo. The residents of Peaksville don't even know if the rest of the world exists anymore, and anyone with unhappy thoughts gets banished to the cornfield. You think about me. Go ahead, Anthony. You're a bad man! Somebody sneak up behind him. Would somebody take a lamp or a bottle or something and end this? It's a Good Life is one of the show's most famous stories, and it was even remade in the 1983 Twilight Zone movie. The bigger budget gave Gremlins director Joe Dante more room to play with Anthony's powers. The show might have left things to our imagination, Uncle Lot's gonna do a trick. but the film depicts his horrifying creations through some awesome 80s puppetry. 
If you look or listen close, you'll even hear Nancy Cartwright in her first movie role. She gets swallowed up in a world of cartoons just a few years before she became Bart Simpson for basically the rest of her career. That's all I Case number three brings us to terror at five and a half feet. Bart's day starts off bad enough. Oop, there's a sweat. And a gremlin tearing up his school bus pushes him over the edge. No one believes Bart's warnings. Otto, you gotta do something. There's a gremlin on the side of the bus. Eh, no problem, Bart, dude. Otto thinks the problem is solved after he runs Hans Mole Man off the road. And Skinner gets so aggravated he forces Bart to sit next to Uter in his very first appearance. Bart fights off the creature. <laughs> But he receives no thanks for his efforts. Look at the bus. I was right, I tell you. I was right. Right or wrong, your behavior was still disruptive, young man. Perhaps spending the remainder of your life in a madhouse will teach you some manners. <laughs> it's not as cerebral as the last two segments, but it's a hell of a ride. And there's something genuinely disturbing about Flanders' severed head. <laughs> In Nightmare at 20,000 Feet, the paranoid passenger of a jumbo jet is played by none other than William Shatner. There's a man out there. What? Look, look, he's crawling on... It's three years before Star Trek. And he hands it up in a brilliant performance that's become part of pop culture. Mad Max mastermind George Miller directed the movie remake starring Shatner's third rock co-star John Lithgow. There was somebody out there. You've got to believe me. And he does a great job, but he's no Captain Kirk. There's a man out there. The gremlin suit may be less convincing in the original, but if you ever wanted to see the Shat go ape shit in a confined space, you should totally check out this episode called New Year's. Now, Treehouse of Horror 6 provides us with a curious case of Homer Cubed. Desperate to hide from Patty and Selma, Homer steps through a hidden portal into the third That's dimension. Weird. It's like something out of that Twilight show about that zone. In 1995, it was a big deal to see a fully rendered 3D world on The Simpsons. Man, this place looks expensive. I feel like I'm wasting a fortune just standing here. Like, you gotta understand, this thing came out a month before Toy Story changed everything, and the episode was hyped for weeks before it aired. It's Homer in 3D. <laughs> Holy macaroni! At first, the animators didn't know how to translate Matt Groening's cartoon anatomy into the third dimension, so they based Homer and Bart's models on vinyl toys. Cool, man! And the results still look pretty damn good today. The CGI void is filled with obscure math jokes and nerdy references, but at the same time it feels eerie. Don't forget, Homer vanishes forever at the end of this episode. He's stuck in our reality, trapped in a world he never made with only erotic cakes to ease his infinite loneliness. Ooh, erotic cake? Homer Cubed actually has a bleaker ending than the Twilight Zone episode is based on Little Girl Lost. It's about a couple who wakes up to discover that their daughter has vanished into the walls of their house. <gasps> and since it's the 60s, the husband is obviously best friends with the physicist. That's what I think. It's kind of a gap opening on another dimension. Probably the fourth dimension. Just like Bart, her father follows her through the portal. <laughs> which is surrounded by the exact same frame drawn by Professor Frank. There are no goldfish or teapots in the fourth dimension, just a strange, trippy existence our minds can't comprehend. But somehow, he saves both his dog and daughter just before the portal closes forever. That's why. It was closing up all the time you were in there. Another few seconds and half of you would have been here and the other half... It's not often you get to see a happy ending on the Twilight Zone, but the non-canon Treehouse of Horror is never afraid to go there. <laughs> Just like our last case, the Genesis Tub. After an electric shock creates a tiny advanced life in Lisa's science experiment, their civilization worships her as their god. You looked down on us from heaven. You gave us life. 
and only your divine intervention can save us from the devil. Naturally, Bart gets a little jealous. Whoops, my finger slipped. Oops, my finger slipped. Oops, my finger slipped. Bart, stop it! <laughs> and the tooth people launch a counteroffensive in another early use of computer animation. What the heck? The small society is taken from a Twilight Zone episode called The Little People. After two astronauts land on a strange planet, one of them discovers a race of insect-sized beings who he terrorizes as a vengeful overlord. They're scared, Fletch. Petrified. And so they do what they're told! Just like Bart and Lisa, the two partners wage war over the helpless little Civ, but while Lisa is trapped in a tiny world until they can figure out rebigulator technology... Oh, great. Stuck in this lousy tub for the rest of my life. The Little People ends with a twist worthy of the scary door. What do you got? A man. A tiny little man. Why, you crushed me to death. I didn't mean to. Say, do you suppose there are any more of them down there? I don't know. What's the difference? We're not here exploring. We're here making repairs. Come on. Come on. Let's get out of here. Speaking of which, Futurama did their own parody of the episode, and so did Brick and Morty. South Park even built a whole episode around the fact that Simpsons did it! Simpsons did it! Oh my god! The tiny underwater civilization has advanced hundreds of years! They think I'm God. The Little People was an impressive feat for 1962 television, and it's a cool concept that stood the test of time, just like Treehouse of Horror. <laughs> By telling short stories outside of the series canon, the writers had a chance to cut loose with the established Simpsons characters in situations that were even too crazy for Springfield. I'm going to switch back to Rod in case you forgot the subtle meaning of this video, because Treehouse of Horror is the perfect opportunity to pay tribute to an influential classic and use its cultural clout to make a legendary show like The Simpsons even better on its influential trek through the Twilight Zone. Hey guys, thanks for watching and Happy New Year! We're huge animation geeks here at Now This Nerd and we've been wanting to do this video for a while. We're also thinking about doing a piece on the evolution of animated violence from Tom and Jerry to Itchy and Scratchy, so let us know in the comments below some of your favorite killer cartoons. And as always, please subscribe to Now This Nerd.